There is a lot to talk about, but let's get... Uh, this, I mean, look, it's been the biggest news story for the last week and a half or so. Latrell Mitchell obviously doing a post-match interview with Triple M. He's yep. said quite a few swear words. And just for context, in case you missed it, it wasn't necessarily, you know, if someone's won a big game or a grand final and you kind of just let one out or one or two and you go, oh, you know, stuff that up and sorry, guys. Yes. And we all kind of moved past that. But this was... You know, quite. I mean, he acknowledged that he was swearing and just said, oh, "I, I don't care." Um, yeah, it seemed a bit blatant, didn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. It was blatant swearing. Um, now, it's been a huge story. Would love to get your thoughts, Smithy, because you know, having been a captain of state, you know, team, country, you're, I'm sure you've dealt with very kind of like bizarre youngerish players where you're like, "Why? What were you thinking, mate? Like, just yep. it's it kind of unnecessary." What are your thoughts on the situation, mate? Yeah, I think um, when you actually break it down, right, so I look at it from a point of view as Latrell's not a rookie um, and, you know, he knows exactly the appropriate way to to talk when there's a microphone um, in front of him. So whether that be on TV or whether it be on radio, um, I think Latrell completely understands the appropriate language that needs to be used post-game, pre-game, half-time when he's coming off the field, um, and, and yeah, it just, it just looked quite blatant to me what he did. Now, for what reason, I'm not too sure. Um, I, I just think it was uncalled for, to be honest, Kempi. It's just uncalled for. And Latrell needs to be better. He just needs to be better in those situations, whether he's frustrated, angry, upset at something. I'm not too sure what it was. He needs to find a way to contain himself. Out of all the commentary, though, out of all the commentary that I've seen over the past you know five days, I think the person that best summed it up was Gus Gould. Now, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if you've seen his comments, but mm. what he spoke of was, was about, you know, Gus said, he said, look, over Luttrell's career, I've been um, critical of him at stages for certain things, but I've but I've praised him also um, a lot for, you know, his, his um, on-field ability and the things that he does in the community. But the one thing that he, he spoke about was that Luttrell often talks about respect, right? and that he wants respect from the community, from rugby league fans, you know, from the game. And that's fair enough, as you, as every person should. But if you want respect, you've got to show respect. I think for, for mine, that, that, that was lacking respect the way he spoke in, in, that, um, in that interview. Uh, and I think for, on the most part, for everything that I've heard said about um, you know, the way he spoke, I think that best summed it up the way Gus Gould did. Yeah, he, he made a great point. And it's, it, look, there's been people kind of, oh, what about the kids listening? Look, I don't think kids listening at 10 o'clock at night is the biggest issue. I do think the issue does land on the, the spot of kind of exactly what Gus Gould was alluding to is that mm. there's a person across from you that's trying to do their job. And then there's, you know, all of these businesses involved that help that make work, uh, help make that work. Then you've got your own mm-hmm. sponsors, you've got your own club. There's a lot of people that, you know, being professional isn't necessarily about making people not uh, entertaining. It's yep. a it's a level of kind of respect that you show your peers whilst in a working environment. That's why yep. we you try to be professional in the workplace. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, I agree with you, mate. I thought Gus summed it up quite nicely. Uh, and with Trell, I just look. I do think Trell is often unfairly maligned. I do think that in this case, unfortunately, I don't think he's being unfairly maligned. I do think it was a very silly thing to do, and just mm. even from it, like, I don't care about the swear words. I'm not. It has, I, like who cares? Yeah. Like, it doesn't bother me one bit. I don't think you do either, Smithy. It's mm. it's more just another headline that the Rabbitohs don't need now. You know, it's yeah. another issue that we've got to talk about when it, it doesn't. There was no. Let's say, let's say he was out in the drink and he did something yes. silly. We'd go, you know what? We all kind of do something silly and these things happen. Mm. The, I guess the concern with this one was it just didn't need to happen. Like, Trell, no. just like, Mate. I don't get it. Yeah. No, that, and that was my point. Like, it was just unnecessary. Like, he, and he, and he knows that's the wrong thing. Like, you just, it's just one thing that, it, like, an unwritten law can be. Like, you just, it's not spoken about. You're not, you're not sat down every week and saying, okay, boys, remember, don't swear in front of a camera or a microphone. It's just you know that's the wrong thing to do. Mm. Um, and just for mine, just completely unnecessary. And like I said, I've seen plenty of guys come off the field really frustrated with either the result, the way the team played, the way they played, or 
a certain situation that they're in at the time. But you need to you need to be able to control those emotions mm. and and just and just hold that back and and speak in a manner which is appropriate for that particular time. Mm. Well, the, I, I I think most people like. Now he can swear as much as he wants. Like we're not we're not saying you can't swear, but just in that in that point in time, there's a time and place for it, and that that was the wrong that was the wrong time and it was the wrong place. Yeah, and, and look to give you uh, just to further your point, Smithy. If he comes on, you know, my podcast and he drops a little swear word or whatever here or there, yeah, that's yeah. that's a good environment. You, you know, yep. it's, you, that's the environment that has been set up. It's mm-hmm. an opt in environment essentially, where you should be you should be eighteen and over to, to listen, or at least old enough that your parents kind of know what you're doing. Um, and a swear word here or there to a 16, 17 year old, it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, but the environment of a, you know, the triple M now, a much smaller uh, part of this that I just want to point out, I mm-hmm. do think I am, I do think that it is a slight, again, it's nowhere near like Trell definitely shouldn't have sworn, but I, I think a smaller kind of side story is I, I do think it's a bit rich, you know, to pelt for, you know, the, the station to get so angry about it voluntarily post it to their social media it's, it gets it i do think that's a bit hypocritical that you're going to sit there and everyone's going to blow up a trell but mm. you still used it you still post yeah. it to your social media and it's like well you know if trell is bad for swearing in the interview yeah. then why who, replay it why yeah why post it to social media where there are kids where there definitely mm. are kids most likely yes. more kids than at 10 p.m. so yeah. if we were going to say trell you need to be professional and you need to set a standard, then you have to say the same thing to the to the radio station that posted to social media. Now that's obviously been deleted because the NRL has come down and basically said you actually aren't allowed to be filming on um, the field. Uh, mm-hmm. And people people have taken that the wrong way. There's I've seen some people go, why is the NRL coming down on Triple M? It's it's not necessarily coming down for the uh, swear word interview. What it, Triple M don't have the rights to be filming on the grounds on the field. Yep. Channel 9 and Fox pay huge money for that. So much so that even clubs aren't supposed to be filming their players scoring a try with their own cameras because the big networks pay such a big... Um, they own the rights to that. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So, uh, again, I think, Smithy, you probably agree. I don't want to speak for you, but it's not about the swear words. It's just about the place you're at. It's about where your team's at right now, and you're yep. a leader of that team, and it's just unnecessary. Yep, completely unnecessary, mate. Um, and I think, yeah, there's a lot being spoken about. So the the main thing for Latrell now is that he's got a huge game this weekend, mm. right? Oh. They got the Roosters. They got the Roosters Friday night. Everyone knows about the rivalry that those two clubs have. This needs to be put to bed by what I believe needs to be a big performance from Latrell. Yep. And if there's one man that can come out and set the world alight in a performance, it is Latrell yep. Mitchell. Uh, so hopefully this is galvanised as a team. Hopefully this you know, is a message to the entire team and they come out and do something special. Ilias has been dropped after only just two games uh, for the Rabbitohs at seven. I'd love to hear mm. your thoughts on this, Smithy. Oh, look, I think it's a little bit unfair and a little bit premature, to be honest. It's, I know they haven't had the best start. And um, look, you know, I've, I've commentated um, their games and I think they've been quite poor, to be honest. But, you know, to... I guess to to drop your number seven, who is still relatively young and still learning his trade, I think, um, yeah, it was just a little bit premature in um, a lot of ways. It's it's two games. Like as a seven, really, you know, even even the quality ones struggle when their teams hasn't got momentum, they haven't got go forward. And their forwards really haven't done a whole heap for them in the first two matches, I must admit. Um, you know, so I think as a, as a halfback, you sort of you're relying on your big men to really sort of dominate the opposition, which they haven't done. The bunnies, they they just haven't done it. Um, and and I don't think that he's had too much help from his senior players too, in, in Cody and, and Latrell. So um, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's some different thinking from. Um, from Jason Demetrio about why he's going to leave Lachlan Ilias out this week. Maybe it might be just to give him a bit of a spell, given the amount of scrutiny that the football side's under at the moment, or whether he just thinks he's not playing well. Um, you know, but but for mine, I just thought, well, after two matches, I think I would have given him a bit more of an opportunity, maybe another couple of weeks, to say, hey, boys, look, the whole team's not playing well here, mm. and we need to sort this out together. Um 
let's let's get our let's get our stuff together for the next couple of weeks and see how we go. Yeah, look, it's um, I agree with you. You know, I was talking about it after round one. I was talking about the fact that the pressure will continually mount for Ilias, and I think that Rabideau's found them in this really hard balancing spot of yes, he's not playing well, but if we if we allow him to not play well play well for long enough. Does his confidence just get torn to shreds with the amount of pressure that, that is mounting? So they're torn between that kind of mode of thinking and the other mode of thinking of like, he's just not playing that well and we need to win games. Uh, and I, so I would love to hear Demetrio's, uh, you know, thought process behind, you know, the exact reason for um, dropping him. If, I'm, mm-hmm. if, I, if I had to make the call, I would have probably given him at least three, four rounds if, if, he, if he showed solid footy in three. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess in Ilias' defence, uh, and you you said this as well, Smithy, it's not like the players around him have been playing that well either. No. So it's very hard on the young man to go, well, look, if I'm in a side where everyone's playing really well and I'm playing poorly, I get dropped, that's much easier to process. I do think the Rabbitohs need to be extremely clear and communicate like on the hour, every hour that he's at training pretty much about Mm. the process, what is happening, why it happened. Because if they're not, he's going to be sitting there in the back of his mind going, well, we were all playing poorly. And, and look, I'll just use it as my own example. I remember uh, I got dropped at the Warriors. And look, I'm, you know, I'm not Ilias. I'm a winger. You, know, you could drop me. Nothing would happen. It doesn't matter. But I, I remember I got you know, rested. I got told I was being rested. And I was like, what? I'm a winger. It's like game two, game two, game three. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so I went back up and I asked. I said, yeah. like, uh, am I getting... And it shouldn't have taken me to go back and ask. But anyway, yep. I, I, w- I went back up and I just said, look, am I getting rested or dropped? And he's like, oh, look, yeah, yeah, pretty much dropped. And then, then the communication wasn't that clear. And look, I'm a winger, so it doesn't really matter as much. But w- so when I go home and I watch the war, like I was playing for the Warriors time, go and lose mm-hmm. another four games in a row or whatever it was. We had a terrible season. There's, there's half of me that's sitting there going, I was playing poorly, I deserve to be dropped. But then there's the other half of me saying, well, we're all playing bad. Like, it wasn't just me. And yeah. so I think the key with Ilias is, is trying to f- communicate with him. What, what are your thoughts, Smithy? Yeah, well, I think communication is the most important thing, you know, in, in any industry, not just footy and within a footy club and footy team. I think the more that your coaches um, speak with the players about what their concerns are, particularly with their game and, and where they need to improve or th- and at the same time things that they're doing well as as well. I think it's important that they that they understand that. But because if you just sort of left out of the team and then set aside, which you know, you we've heard stories over you know, over the journey of certain players being dropped and they, they've got absolutely no idea as to why they are not in first grade anymore or what happened. Um, and they're sort of left to their own devices. You know, I think it's important, particularly for Ilias, who he's been in this situation before Kempi, mm. where the team hasn't been playing that well and, and he's been the man that's been dropped. So I know there's always a lot of scrutiny on, on the person wearing the number seven. He's the guy that's meant to be in charge of the way that the team, you know, certainly you know, plays and, and he's the guy mostly involved in, um, you know, directing the team around the park and, and how things are set up and they play out. But... I just think in this particular situation, it, it's it's a little bit premature, yeah. a little bit premature. But you know, I think um, the guy replacing him, Dean Hawkins, there's there's plenty of raps about him. So um, yet yet to see what he can produce this year. I know he's he's already played NRL, like he's played like half a dozen games. Yeah. Um, so he, he's not it's it's not his first time in there, and um, he's completely unknown. But um, I think it was he was he New South Wales Cup Player of the Year last year. Is that right? I, I'm not I think it, yeah, I'm not sure about that. I do know that they won both the New South Wales Cup and the Interstate Cup, and he led them. Yeah, so I think um, I, I believe he was. Yeah, um, he was, and and one of the, the best players in that competition. So we'll see how he goes. We'll see if he makes a difference um, this week. But either way, it's a huge challenge coming in um, for your first up game in the NRL coming up against the Chooks. Uh, just got it from our uh, producer, a great producer that last three years in a row, play, New South Wales Player Cup of the Year. Now, I'd assume that would be four Rabbitohs. I don't think it'd be mm-hmm. across the entirety of New South Wales Cup. Uh, if it yep. is, holy, snap him up, He's some done club. Well. Um, yeah. uh, listen, what would you, okay, you know, you've, although Storm were incredibly dominant, um, mm-hmm. there were patches where, you know, you would 
lose your standards. You would almost play unstorm like footy. As mm-hmm. a captain, what do you think the, the Rabbitohs, what would you be doing heading into this game this week? Would there be honesty sessions? With it? What would it be? Well, you just, yeah, well, it, it starts with your review and it's about honesty, right? You've you got to be upfront and be brutally honest and tell the truth to all your teammates. Um, and and start, like the coach can talk until he's blue in the face in front of the group, right? But the most powerful messages come from your teammates yeah. and, and, and those that are sort of in that, that senior play category. They're the ones that are, that need to address the situation. Guys like Cody Walker and Cam Murray, and um, Latrell Mitchell, and but at the same time, uh, Kempi, they're the guys that have to go out and be your best players too. Yeah, right. You can talk about standards, but you have to drive them as well. And it all starts with training. And, and it's a funny. It's funny at times with footy, right? And, and I'm sure it's all. It's in all sports, whether it be team sports, individual sports. You can. You can train the house down. Yeah. You can train the house down, but then when you come out on game day, it just doesn't work. Mm. I, I remember this happened. This happened to us um, at the Storm in in two thousand and twelve, I believe it was, where we went through a period. We we lost five games in a row. Never happened in the in the club's history. Wow. Um, where we 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 trained like we were training the house down and we felt great. Everyone was up and about. There was a positive um, feeling around the place, but we just couldn't get it done in games for, for whatever reason, right? Um, and we lost five in a row. So we were sitting there scratching our heads, like thinking to ourselves, what's going on? How do we fix this? The only way we did it was, you know, we made sure we reviewed our games and were honest about our performances as individuals and then went back to the training paddock and just kept believing in – our game plan. Mm. We kept believing in our game plan. We continued to work hard and things turned around. We ended up winning the premiership that year, right? Yeah. But they turned around. At at a point in time there, it didn't look great. Mm. But, you know, when you had guys like Billy and Cooper, Bellyache, you know, really leading from the front from the front and and setting great examples at training every day, things slowly turned. So I think that's that's what needs to happen at, at the bunnies. And now with the, with the halfback situation with Lachlan, um, the other thing with that is when you're chopping and changing a guy in such a key position, that can really, you know, that can that can make things a little bit unstable within the group. So I'd love to see, I'd love to see, you know, the Rabbits, you know, whether they go Dean Hawkins or whether they go Lachlan Elias and just stick with one and say, mate, you are our man. Let's get through this together. Welcome back to the captain's run. Now let's get straight into it. The uh, the Knights have dropped mm. Jackson Hastings after two rounds. Two rounds. Uh, this caught a lot of people by surprise, including myself. I uh, look. I think that Ilias may or may not have needed a little bit of time, and I thought they'd take a little, you know, a little bit longer to make that decision. Definitely with Hastings Gamble, I thought they'd give him at least the first three to four rounds. Uh, that clearly isn't the case. Colga comes in. Mate, what are your thoughts on this, Smithy? Well, what are the reports? Um, and these are just reports. I don't know. You might know a bit more about this, Kempi. But the reports are a part of him being dropped was because he refused to train with reserve grade. Is that true? No. So Have we got confirmation on that? What's that? So basically, the, the report out is, and what I don't like about it is, how did this get out into the media? It's yeah. not a, Anyway, so he was <laughs> dropped. And then later in the day, after a training with first grade, he said, oh, the, the, apparently the coaches said to him, or the Knights have said to him, oh, you can train with the New South Wales Cup if you like. And Hastings wow. has said, look, no, nah, I've already trained all day, um, gotcha. to my understanding. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. And he's gone home. Uh, what really concerns me about this is how does that conversation get to the media? Mm. We might have some loose lips. Well, and we might have some agendas. Loose lips. We might have some agendas. Sinks ships, man. How? how because well, there's a little yeah. bit of is there a little bit of chatter about maybe Jackson Hastings moving this year too? I don't know. Is, that, is there a little maybe. bit of chatter about that as well? Well, look, I've yeah. seen a little something, and, and yes. it could, it's all it's all chat and innuendo, and maybe just a bit of fake news. A bit Ooh. of fake news gets around every now and again. Misinformation. <laughs> but no, this is um again they they've they haven't had the the best of starts considering I think they would have I think they would have had quite high expectations the Knights off the back of the way they finished last year right so they win 11 straight go to New Zealand really tough road trip um, and they go down but they finished strongly and and Jackson Hastings was was part of that reason like Ponga was 
he was the one leading the charge for that footy side. But Jackson Hastings played his part and in his role in, in those guys reaching the semifinals. Um, I guess I, I, it's a bit like Lachlan Ilias, right? So he's in the halves and they've cut him after two rounds. I guess the reason why he's found himself in this position is that they've got a ready-made seven to go in Cogger mm. and also um, Braley's back as well, Jaden Braley. Right, so he just come, he just slots straight into the bench, and um, I, I think uh, a, a Jaden Braley fully fit, playing well, is going to be in their starting side. He's going to be their starting hooker. So I think it was just a bit of a, a a perfect storm for Jackson to be relegated to Reggie's this week, given they've got two quality players, they're ready to go, and maybe he wasn't in the best of form. But I do go back, I do go back to what I, I spoke about with Lachlan Elias about. You know, that's it's a big call this early in the season to be, I guess, chopping and changing, particularly key positions. Well, if put it this way, if as you just said, like if you make this decision now, what you're basically saying is you will not have this seven jersey back for a minimum four weeks because there's no way you can drop a seven, or you can if you want to, but why would you chop and change this much? Drop a seven for one or two weeks and then bring him straight back in, because mm. then you just you're stuffing around with combinations. Surely you're going to give the new mm. seven at least four weeks to stay in that seven jersey. Well, I have to. Surely. Well, I have to. Yeah. And you know, it's, again, I go back to what I was saying earlier about you know key position players, how vital they are. Like you, you, you can't chop and change week to week mm. with a seven. Now, you can do that in different positions, I believe, with, say, you know, a front rower, maybe a back row, or, or, you know, most certainly those ruck players. So you're two props and a lock. And I know you're not going to get the same um, ability and skill level between players, but they're much easier to chop and change within within those positions. They don't, they don't play as much as a key role as those guys do in the seven jersey, in the six, in the one, in the nine. If you're chopping and changing all the different times, like you get, you're getting different styles of players mm. every week, which is going to change the way that the, that the team performs, the team operates. So I'm agreeing with you, mate. When when um, Adam O'Brien named Cogger in seven this week, it's sort of a bit of a it's a bit of a message, really. If he stays fit, I think he's going to be in there for the next few weeks at least. Yeah. It's uh, now with the Knights. They're a similar situation to the Rabbitohs. Obviously, I guess not as high as hopes as the Rabbitohs. Rabbitohs, a lot of people talking about Premiership Knights. I think a lot of fans were just hoping. Look, can we go as well as we did last year? Get some consistency. Yeah. I personally, when I watch that team, they're not playing like the Steel City gritty team that I saw last year. There's gen- I feel no. like standards have dropped a little bit. What What are mm. your thoughts, Smithy? Well, I don't know if standards have dropped a little bit. Maybe they're just they're they're quite happy with the way things went last year, or maybe they just think, well, we did it last year. We 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 made it to the finals. We went on a run. We'll do it again. May I I actually seen the first signs of what you're talking about in that trial game, yeah, um, against Melbourne in Fiji. Mm. Like they they there, there were some um, big names missing from Melbourne, um, and still they struggled. Against Melbourne, like that was almost their strongest lineup. The Knights um, that they fielded in in Fiji against Melbourne in the last preseason game, and they really struggled. There was some there was some nice touches from Ponga. Um, they they had some nice moments. The Knights, but overall, I, I was really not impressed with the way they played. And I thought they they were playing against the footy side that they they should have well at least competed with, and possibly beaten mm. in that game. Yeah. Um, you know, Melbourne Melbourne had a side that wasn't their strongest team um, running out, whereas I thought that was pretty much close to full strength for Newcastle. So when you're seeing those signs in preseason matches, like that match there is your last opportunity before round one. You need to be pretty close to your best um, before the season starts. And that, was, that wasn't a great sign at all. It gave me no confidence for Newcastle going into the season. And, you know, they've backed it up with... Um, a couple of losses already. Yeah, and there's some people have kind of uh, alluded that the trial matches don't matter. They mean nothing. And when, when you know, myself, I'm not sure about you, Smithy, but I, I've, when I say trials don't matter, what I'm mm. saying is is the result doesn't matter. What matters mm. is 
is the performance of each individual player, combinations. Yep. And when you looked at the Knights, the performance of key individual players that should really be... Okay, when you watch a trial match and you've got... Mm-hmm. Let's say on one side you've got five first graders and the other side is mm-hmm. full of reserve graders. Even if the first graders are playing average, they still should look a class above yep. the reserve grade. And we didn't really see that with the Knights. No. And, uh, mate, their middles, that's where I thought the biggest concern was for me. Yeah. But they had the Saifidi brothers playing in Fiji. Oh, they're experienced campaigners, big bodies, aggressive. Like, well, I've, we've seen them play representative football. Yeah, origin. And, and just, like, dominate, like, some of those big games. I just didn't see that, and I haven't seen it this year. So, you know, like, as classy as your halves and your outside backs are, if your middles are are not performing well and not at least matching the opposition, then it 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 really it doesn't matter who you've got in your one to six jerseys. Yeah. Um, if they're not standing up and, and doing their job in the middle, well those guys will not get an opportunity on the outside. Now, good some positive news. Let's get to some positive news. Okay, okay. So the game's on the line. The Warriors have played <laughs> Probably their best second half in a very long time. Looking absolutely clinical. We're watching a game. We're going, wow, Warriors are premiership contenders. And I actually still think they are, even though they're 0-2. I think they've been fantastic. Just a bit patchy mm-hmm. here and there. Mm-hmm. The Melbourne Storm, with three and a half minutes to go, find a way inside ball to Pappy. He goes over. Yes. Then Xavier Coates does one of the greatest match-winning tries I've ever seen in my life. Now, you may have seen crazier put-downs, but I don't think you've seen... With all the circumstances involved, you might have had bigger games for sure. But to score the try that he did, it is one of the greatest finishes I've ever seen. Smithy, what were you doing at this time? I'm sure you were very excited. I was, and I had to um, keep a bit of a lid on it, Kempi, because I was um, I was actually attending a dinner out in Central Queensland. Oh right? no! So, I, so I, I I couldn't watch the game. I couldn't. I wasn't in my lounge room watching um, on telly, obviously. So I had my young fellow was out there with me. And we sort of, we had the updates going and a little bit of vision. And my, so at three minutes to go, well, what was it? Sorry, four minutes to go. I'm thinking, oh, mate, we've been dusted. Yeah. You know, like Warriors, very good footy side. I felt they should have ra- won that round one match over in New Zealand where they let that 12 nil lead slip um, against the Sharkies. And they're always big matchups, right? Yeah. Always big matchups, um, Storm Warriors. And if you remember back to last year, I felt as though they should have beat Melbourne on that Anzac Day clash too, but they let it slip. Anyway, four minutes to go. We're down, and I'm thinking, geez, like this is this is must have been a pretty good game. Like Warriors, you know, well done. Next minute, we score. Like you said, Pappenhausen scores three and a half to go or something, and then all of a sudden, my young bloke says, "Dad, Xavier scored. We won." I was like, "What? What?" And it wasn't until the end of the night. So I'm, I'm like, I'm. I'm busting to see how this all <laughs> unfolded. And I'm thinking, what sort of set play did they get? You know, yep. it was it's a cross kick. It's, surely it's a cross kick to Xavier, and he's leapt up and yeah. out jumped um, DWZ and scored in the corner. Sort of trademark coach try, but no, 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 he's outdone himself. Oh my! God. Oh, I just couldn't believe he got that down. Oh. Couldn't believe it. May give him. May, may, where's the engraver? Seriously. Put it in the trophy. Put it in the plaque now. Try of the year. Easy. No one's going to beat it. No. Nah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, boys. To all those guys out there that score these miraculous tries, you are not beating this one. It is. like, And the crazy thing about the try was is Dallin Wateni Zelezniak could not have done more. Yeah. He checked his centre, made sure mm-hmm. he wasn't going to get gassed. They defended really well. They actually defended it well, mate. Perfectly. Like, what What else could he do in that situation? He, he lit, like, incredible finish. Like, seriously incredible. And... Uh, just another stake in the ground where the Melbourne Storm just remind everyone that their culture, the way they play, their never-say-die attitude, it's still as strong as it was you know, 20 years ago. An mm-hmm. absolutely miraculous finish. And the fact that the great little Pappy also had his hands in two tries and a beautiful play. I mean, the timing yeah. of those inside balls. Just, yep. yeah, look. I, that, I was, was, that was Slater-like, those tries. Oh, mate. Those inside balls. Now I know I know Pappy gets the uh, the plaudits there for and and his timing needs to be um, on the mark right, but those balls on the inside by the back rowers, I think um, was it Joey Chan was one. Yep, 
And then Katoa was the other, I think. Yeah, Katoa was the second one, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So like those, those inside passes by those oh. second rowers, like they're big men, yeah. right? So they're they're their main job, they're, they're paid to get forward, use their big bodies, you know, bend the line, get quick play of the balls, punch holes for their halves. But to have that slide of hand, that, that's like that's like a halfback. That's like a 5'8". You know, be able to get that ball and then quickly in that short space of time with defenders coming at them just yeah. to pop it on the inside was – it was just fantastic teamwork. Um, and he is looking good, Paps. A game is happening tonight mm-hmm. that is between two teams – that have played each other before in a yes. quite substantial game last year. Yes. But I'm not as a former Bronco, I am right. not allowed to say what the game is. Kevy, well, this is what Kevy rang me and he said the exact same thing as he says in this audio. Have yeah, look, you it was a great what the thing I don't like about it, Fletch, yes. is all the negativity around what happened, you know? Yep. Sure, like to make a grand final, that's a tremendous effort. All okay. seventeen teams last year laced up. You know, to get yep. into the grand final. That's what you do as a player and as a coach and as a supporter of the club. You want to be there grand final day. The yep. next best thing, of course, is to win it. You know, and yep. I, all all the negativity around, you know, Penrith are a bit, well, came back brilliantly. Like, it, it's not like we just handed them the trophy. They fought hard. Yep. Nathan Cleary uh, played the best 20 minutes I've seen anyone play <laughs> in how, well, since there's Ramam in that <laughs> earlier 20 <laughs> that's in the right. quarter. You know that's what I mean? right. So, so that for me, and that's why I said to the players, if they want to talk negatively about the grand final, don't talk to them because it was a great experience. Sure, we didn't win, mm. but there were so many good learnings and so many good things happened in that game that we're, we're, we're taking that, you know, into this year. And I just want the whole experience to be a positive one rather than, oh, the grand final. Yeah, the, so many good things yeah. happened in that yeah. game. Is, isn't it interesting? And, and mm. he brings up some really good points where... Yeah, it's a fair take on it. It's a really fair take, but... Okay, imagine a world where this. Let's say Penrith Panthers were talking about the grand final a week. We would say, put that behind you, boys. That was last year, and you won. Whereas because it's yeah. the losing team, we say, oh, we should, we need to talk about this. So mm. I kind of do understand where Kevy's coming from. What do you reckon, Smithy? Yeah, I um, I hadn't heard that audio until then, Kempy. So he actually explained it quite well about you know the whole negativity around the around the situation and the way they were actually lost the game. It was there. They had one hand on the trophy, and it took the, an an extraordinary effort by Penrith um, to come back and win that game. And there were some um, huge efforts by individuals in that footy side as well. But um, yeah, I get it. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. I actually thought it was a, as a complete ban. Remember, there was a ban when he was coaching Origin, um, yeah. and and the coach whisperer was involved. It was. What was the band? You the couldn't blue. mention New South Wales or Blues, Blue or something like that. Off. Yeah, you couldn't mention any of it, and if you did, it was a uh, it was a fine. It was a twenty five dollar or fifty dollar fine or something, um, which created a little bit of interest in that conversation and a bit of a laugh. But no, I, I get it. I get what Kevy's saying because when when you're thinking about you know preparing for this match, you, you don't want to have to draw your mind back to that, and and it sort of it does get you down a little bit. And in some ways, you know, for particular players, it could probably get you in a bit of a negative mindset and you start thinking over and over and over what you could have done differently or better. But that was a long time ago, mate. Mm. Like well, that was six months ago. Yeah. You know, this is, we're, we're in a brand new season. It doesn't matter what happened in that grand final now. Like we are now round three, different teams. There's two completely different teams playing in this in this match compared to what they were last year. Both sides have lost... Um, some big name players, and so they're out there to to really you know create different history. I know there's a rivalry built now that these two have been grand finalists. It, that that's just a natural thing that happens between two footy sides when they play against each other and they're and they're benchmark teams and they've got elite players in their competition. That that rivalry starts, but yeah, I do understand that. But at the same time, like. I remember, um, you know, after we'd lost a couple of those grand finals, I, I'd sort of look forward to playing that team again. Yeah. Just having that opportunity to come up against them again because you know that's it's a great challenge. It's, it's a good test. And you know what? Like, does it take a little bit of the pain away if you are to play well and get a win? Maybe maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. So I used to think about it a little bit as well. But, you know, if, if, if Kev thinks it's best for his players and his team not to be talking about it constantly with media, then... Yeah, so be it. Yeah, look, I'll be honest. I before hearing Kev's because that's the first time I've heard that little uh, audio clip. Mm. I was kind of like, "What are we? Come on, that's a little bit silly." Not talking about the grand final, like it's obviously, 
But after hearing that, he does make some very, very good points. And also, mm. when you look at the type of team the Broncos are, they are a very positive glass half full team of yeah. we're going to chip and chase from anywhere. We'll make yes. mistakes. Well, that's Kevy, mate, isn't it? Yeah, it's Kevy. Kevy and Alfie. Oh, man, bring him back. <laughs> um, and, and so you don't want to have a negative mindset in the Broncos jersey right now because that's the polar opposite of the style yep. of footy they play. Uh, yep. And so if you're going into the game thinking, oh, should I, shouldn't I chip or chase? Hesitation is what kills teams like that that are very you know, positive, kind of mm. uh, upbeat's the wrong word, but uh, very risk take. Like they're very, yeah. very, they'll take a lot of risks and they're yeah. willing to complete it around the 75% mark. And so I mm. kind of do totally understand where Kevy's coming from with that. Now, I've got a big question for you, Smithy. Yes. I need to know. Okay. Who is a bigger loss to their team? Now, dis- let's take away the fact that Reynolds is out. Mm-hmm. Just these two players. Who's a bigger loss for their team? Payne Haas or James Fisher Harris? Oh, geez. Uh, man, that's a that's a really tough question to answer. Given given they're they're both uh, they're the big dogs, right, in in their teams. And and I know Penrith have got the one two punch with Leota starting up front as well. Um, but I'll, I'll I would say Payne Haas, given just given you know when when you think of Penrith, right, and particularly the last couple of years, they have got a squad at the moment that if you if you lose a player in any particular position, you've got a ready-made guy there to step in and fill that same position and play the exact same role as the guy going out. And he's going to do a, a, a very similar job to that man that he's replacing. Now, in, in the form of Lindsay Smith, like he, he has been outstanding, I think, for yeah. Penrith over the last couple of seasons. He, he's played a lot of his footy off the bench, but he's played... In the ruck, I think he's played a couple of uh, he's played a few minutes in the back row as well, and he has performed extremely well. He, like he's one of their unsung heroes. There's there's a handful of them, but um, he has been an unsung hero for them. At this stage, do we know the replacement for Payne Haas? Like it's surely it's got to be Xavier Willison. So you'd assume, I, but, that, but I don't yeah. think he's been named as yet. It's it's going to be interesting because do you push? Do you push? Carrigan into the front row with Jensen and bring Heatherington on at 13. Or, well, I, well yeah. I think his role doesn't change, mate. Yeah. I think whether I think whether um, Carrigan is playing up front, starting in the front row, or packs down in front row, or, or plays 13, I think he, he plays the same style of footy, mate. I don't think it really changes his role on the footy side. Okay, super interesting. So, producer, just let us know. Fletcher Baker is starting. With uh, Xavier wow. Willison on the bench, so Fletcher Baker over Tapaua. That's uh, wow, huge call. Yeah, well, remembering Big Marty, he he started the game in Vegas. Yeah, so he started he started on the field um, in round one for them. Come off the bench last week, of course, um, and, and I actually thought he was. Um, I thought he made a, a, quite a good impact off the bench. So maybe that's what um, Kevy's thinking is keeping Marty on the bench and bringing him on as a bit of an impact player when. Um, the game settles down a bit, but yeah, Fletcher Baker, yeah, I can understand that. Big body, big boy, big body. Yeah. Um, same for Xavier Willison. He's played a couple of games in in Queensland Cup now for the Burley Bears. Um, been going quite strongly, and I think there's probably you know, people interested as to why he wasn't playing first grade. So good opportunity for him against the reigning premiers to to have a strong performance, and he may push for an NRL spot again in round four if he plays well. So Willison. What a great forward pack to test where you are as a player. You know, I understand mm. Fisher Harris is out, but yep. if you really want to look at the benchmark and especially with forwards, you know, young forwards can come in and dominate, you know, some of the lower tier sides that are struggling. But if you yep. can come on and at least hold your own against the Panthers, geez, that'll give Willison confidence heading to the rest of the year. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. And yeah, you know, we're yet to see how many minutes he gets. You know, we we don't even know how this game's gonna play out. Like there could be a HIA or an injury early. Let's let's hope not. But he might play big minutes, he might get a few minutes. We're not too sure, but I think, you know, for for this young man who's got a huge future, huge future, if he if he gets this opportunity, I think he'll be pretty hungry to get out there and, and put in a big match. Now, onto the Panthers' side. Isaac Tungo signs a, a long deal with the Panthers in his 50th game. Goes yep. out, 240-plus metres, nine tackle breaks, a try, a try assist, 
plus six <laughs> line breaks. Now, granted, it was against a back rower, but in, a, <laughs> in saying yeah. that, you know, it's six. Like, it, mm. it's six, guys. I, I think some people have kind of gone, oh, it's against a back rower. Look, we've seen plenty of back rowers go into the centres and haven't had six line breaks. Yep. What's your thoughts on Isaac Tungle? And do you think that he might be... I understand that the absolute stacked in the back line for the Blues. But yep. I tell you what, these two, May and Tungle, have really put their hands up early on this season. Matt, absolutely. Every time he touches the ball, he's a handful. Yeah, He is an absolute handful. And, he, and he's one of these guys, he's a bit like, um, you know, like a Katoni Staggs where you get him an opportunity with space and time around him and, and particularly a one-on-one opportunity with his opposite man. More times than not, he's going to stand them up and, and make some sort of dint in your line, if not make a line break and then create opportunities for his men around him. He, he, is, he is an impressive young player. 21 Impressive years young old. player. Yeah, 21. Yeah, 21. Just signed. It was a four-year deal, wasn't it, Kempi? Yeah. Reported four-year, 750. Um, so, you know, that's a great result for himself. Young man on really, really good money. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think Panthers looking at what he's producing at the moment, like six line breaks as a centre, um, I think they're looking at thinking to himself, like, we've, we've got some value there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if he, if he continues on this form with the new salary, in, salary cap increase, you know, you, there'd be a lot of clubs out there that'd be throwing big cash at an explosive. Not, I think the unique thing about Tungle is not only is he similar to Katoni Staggs in that explosive, give him some space to do something special, but he gets mm-hmm. through work as well. Um, and if there's one part of Katoni's game, he's more of a Ferrari than a, a, you know, a 15 to 20 carries. He's more around the 12 to 13 kind of carries. Yep. Now, Smithy, the Broncos have been pushed all the way out to four bucks, four dollars wow. head to head against the Panthers. Now we all know how Panthers can win this game. How mm. do the Broncos win this game? It's a, oh, um, you know, with so many well, people out. Yeah, well, they just mate, they need to hold the footy, which they didn't do well last week, mm. right? Particularly in the first half. Second half, their completion rates skyrocketed and subsequently so did their footy. Off the back of a couple of you know, really classy involvements from Reese Walsh, they need to get him involved early. That's what, they, that's what they need to do. They really do. Mm. There's a big test from going down there, particularly without Adam Reynolds. Um, you know, so I think you know, the, the, the combination of Reynolds and Haas not being there is the reason why I think you know, their chances of blowing out, particularly with, with the punters. Um, you know, so Jock Madden, he gets his opportunity. He, he's, he's, a, he's a very good young player too. I don't think he's going to be overawed by this situation. And we're just talking about the mindset of, of Kevy, his coaching staff, and the Broncos. It, it's all about positivity and, um, you know, encouraging their players to go and play footy. Not to be negative and sort of stay in your shell and see how the game's going to unfold. Unfold. It's it's about attacking the game, and taking it to Penrith. That's what they need to do. They just need to go at them like they did in the grand final last year. Now, so I I can say that. Okay, I can talk about it because I never play for the Broncos. I can mention the grand final. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's what they did in the grand final last year. Now they weren't good enough to hold on. Okay, they weren't good enough to hold on. But they exploded out of the blocks. They played footy, they chanced their arm at times, and things come off of them, mm. all right? Like, have a look at the way, like, Ezra Mam, like, ran the football. Yeah. Asked questions. He come up with three tries. Like, yeah. you know, like, they, they got to go at him early. It's a, it's a big test for their forward pack. Um, Fisher-Harris not being there makes it slightly easier, slightly easier, but um, take them on through the middle, play footy, ask questions. Like, last week, like, Parramatta, Okay, they got beat, but they played some good footy. They they scored tries through Penrith. Yeah. When's the last time you've seen so many tries through their defensive line? Absolutely. They usually make you go round, and they make you come up with big plays, but they went through them. Mm. You know, Nathan Cleary, you know, made some poor defensive decisions. So did you know, guys on the other side of, of um, the ruck as well. So th- there are some opportunities for them there, the Broncos, if they're willing to, to take them on. I look at the Broncos and, and I know, you know, it's very easy to get caught up in the ins and the outs and all that kind of stuff. I, I would, if I'm the Broncos, take out names and look at it like this. We have enough players currently playing to get us points. Reese Walsh, the best attacking player in the competition, you know, pretty much, arguably. Mm-hmm. Ezra Mam, Selwyn Cobbo, Katoni Staggs, Jesse Arthurs, Dean Mariner, 
So if I'm going to the Broncos game game plan, I'm saying, guys, it is all just about defense. Don't even yep. don't worry about clunkiness or whatever, because Reese Walsh has shown even last week when the game was in the balance, he just said, "Give me the ball." He made something happen. Yep. So I'd be heading into this game going, focusing purely on defense. I would be I would be challenging Madden and saying, "Okay, yes, Adam Reynolds, he may be a senior player and he's achieved a lot more. Can you honestly tell me you're, he's much better of a defender than you?" Mm. Probably not. Like uh, defensively, yep. I wouldn't. No one sits here and says Adam Reynolds is the best defensive seven in the game. He's one of the better attacking sevens in the game. So my argument to Madden would be, mate, all I need you to do is defend your absolute ass off and kick yep. well, and that's it. How have you rated the Raiders' season, Smithy? Uh, impressive. Mm. Yep, impressive start to the year for the Raiders. Uh, I know they took on West Tigers last week, which was a game that I think everyone expected them to win. But um, two from two from two, mate, in this competition is it's a good result. And you know, to be fair, I I didn't have them at that stage. I, I didn't I didn't really think that they were going to win against Newcastle in round one. But uh, this is their biggest test. Yeah. Um, a, a Warriors side, I think that will be. I reckon they'll be they'll be a little bit um, down on well not down I shouldn't say down but they'll be very disappointed with the way that game finished on the weekend. They've had two results now where they were in strong positions to win their games. They're opening two games. They could very well be two and zero rather than zero and two. Yeah. Um, and sitting on top of the competition. So um, look, this one they they really need to stand up. I think Wade Egan being back is a huge boost for them. I think they're they're. A, very, completely different side um, when he's playing. Um, he just he just gets them nice and straight down the field. Yeah, that that that's that's his biggest strength is that when he gets out of dummy half, he gets his forwards running straight into the line. They run direct. They don't they don't have a lot of sideways movement. So he keeps the markers and the A defenders really honest. It doesn't matter what team they play against. He he, he seems to be able to you know create some space for. His men on the outside, particularly Sean Johnson, because he holds up those middle defenders. Um, so they're a, a much stronger outfit. But the Raiders, um, they get some names back too, like Elliot White, Whitehead, and he, he's one of the one of the stronger back rowers in the competition. Um, and they will be full of confidence, yeah. full of confidence. You know, if the Warriors before the season started, and you looked around three. And it's no disrespect to the Raiders at all. But before the season started, you would have said, okay, Sharkies, hopefully jag the win, storm away, okay, if we if we drop that one, we can kind of cop that. Now, the Raiders having been on top of the comp, it's it's gone from a game where they would expect to win to a degree to a game where it's like, wow, we're playing the form team, arguably the form mm -hmm. team of the comp, them and mainly Manly. Mm -hmm. yep. And the problem the Warriors face now is that we can all sit here and say, Still looking great, you know. Yes, they lost the first two, but they're still a premiership threat. But it's, yep. it can only go for so long without a win to continue that's to right. tell yourself that. Eventually, you got to get that win. Well, that's right, mate. Yeah, like it's it's, th and this is the time that needs to happen, right? If they go zero and three, all of a sudden, the blowtorch it gets a little bit hotter. Mm. Um, yeah, they start to a few little grumblings here and there. So, playing at home. Um, I think the form they've shown enough form right over the first two to suggest that they they're in the hunt again this year. Mm. They just need to find like finish off the games that, that where they get away to good starts. Um, they need to be able to ice those games. Now Roosters v the Rabbitohs, what a clash! I mean, <laughs> it's just mouth watering this clash and mm. the Rabbitohs with all the drama and everything going on. You know, you'd expect them to get up for this, but the Roosters, relatively good start to the year. You know, Manly red hot, and they got a win over the Broncos. Luke Keary is out, though. So Sand and Smith comes in uh, alongside Sam Walker. Sue Wong has dropped down to reserves. Nat Butcher joining the starting side. Kangaroos forward. Crichton set to play his first NRL game of the year off the bench. Killed it in New South Wales Cup. And Connor Watson yep. makes his long awaited return, lining up in 14 jersey for his first NRL game <laughs> since the 20. 22 qualifying final. Rabbitohs, Hawkins in for Ilias. White and returns for a suspension to partner Tass in the centres with Kenna dropping out. Davy, Davy Mowali and Host added to their forwards with Kepi going to the bench. Uh, just quickly, 
One mm. positive for the, the Rabbitohs is Moali's been outstanding for a, a young yes. forward in their first two games, in my opinion, especially their second game. He has been very strong. Mm. Uh, very strong for a side that is struggling and, and not playing anywhere near their best. Like when you look at their lineup, one to seventy on paper, like they're they're one of the best teams in the comp. Mm. And and you look at them each week and go, well, they should, they're, they're winning more games than they lose, but they just haven't looked anywhere near where they should be at the moment. For the Roosters, um, they've had a couple of well, they've had a couple of tough ones. They they took on. Manly last week, who you just mentioned, Kempi, uh, one of the form teams of the competition. Many saying that they are the best team out of the first two weeks and looking very strong. Um, the one I'm looking at at the moment, I've circled a couple of names, Jack Wyden. Mm. I think this is one of the most anticipated returns of any player in the competition and, and the move that he's made too to the Rabbitohs, um, particularly where he's going to fit in. He's been slotted in in the centres. Uh, he'll play on that left edge and he's going to bring... What he will bring to this footy side is, I think, a bit of mongrel, um, a bit of intent, and a bit of urgency. That's the that's that's the type of player that Jack Whiten is, and that's the way he plays. You see him play at that you know, that style of footy at all different levels, and um, it's why you know when he was playing at the Raiders, he was a major focus of their team. He was a, he was the focal point of their footy side, and he really drove those those standards that I just spoke about in, in those areas. So I think him coming in, it may just give a little bit of a kickstart to a lot of those players around him because those things I spoke about there, the the intent and the urgency, I just haven't seen that from the Rabbits. Mm. I haven't seen it. Yeah. And, you know, like I, I, I called their game last week against the Broncos and at times where, you know, they needed someone to step up and, and, and do something and grab the game by the scruff and say, hey, boys, come with me. There was no one. Mm. There yeah. was no one. So maybe Jack Whiten is the man to do that. The other guy quickly, mate, is Connor Watson. Been out for a long time. Um, can't wait to see his return. Um, clearly off the bench as a utility. Spent a bit of time at nine. Maybe in the ruck as well. Um, he is a live wire. So this is a great matchup. Great matchup for me. What a game. What an incredible game we're going to watch. Uh Roosters versus Rabbitohs. Just a point on, on Jackie Whiten. A really good example of that is is, and I've spoken about it quite a bit, Last year, Warriors v Broncos, the game's in the balance, and they didn't necessarily have that star kind of outside back explosive player to really, you know, do something to change momentum. Then you fast forward, Melbourne Storm versus the Warriors, the game's in the balance, the Warriors need someone to stand up and just ring momentum back. Roger Tuovashek has multiple big plays to get him back in the match, and it's a roundabout way of saying, you know, they genuinely are this. So there's there's good players, there's great players, then there's game changers, and there's very few of them in the NRL. And Jackie Wyden is a game changer type of player. So he really there is he's not only does he have pressure because he's coming to a new club and you know he's he's a big signing, he's a marquee signing, but there's also pressure of not just changing the game, but changing their season trajectory. Like I know it's early in the year. But they need someone to stand up and say, boys, this is not the standard. This this is now the standard. And Jackie can be that player for the Rabbitohs, I think. Absolutely, mate. I think, um, as I said, he, it's the most anticipated move in, in a couple of years. And I think the Bunnies fans, they'll all be keen to see Jackie White and get out there uh, Friday night and, and see what he's got. And also what I hope Jackie White does is that it sends a message to Trell and Cody as well, you know, of... Okay, yeah, I understand, you know, Trell and, and Cody Walker, they are big superstars, but Jackie Whiten's a superstar of the game too. He's a Clive Churchill winner. You know, he's played some good origin games. He's played for his country. And so if he comes out and says, this is a standard, the competitor in, in Trell and Cody, they'll almost naturally react to that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm hoping that we see not only the best game from Jackie Whiten, but also from Cody Walker, also from Latrell Mitchell. Bulldogs host the Titans Saturday, 3 p.m., 2 p.m. Queensland time at Belmore. Bulldogs team news. Liam Knight coming into prop for Pulsar Famasili, Famasili, Famasili apologies, yes. who suffered a concussion against the Sharkies, uh, which I just want to say quickly, I understand you look at the scoreboard last week, but when you look at them losing their front rower first run of the game and the fact that they were in that game for most of it, I actually think there's a lot to like from that performance for, by the Doggies. 
Uh, I know it's hard to hear because you've lost both mm-hmm. games. But anyway, Adokar remains on the sideline as he continues to recover from a shoulder injury. Four and returns to the halves, make his first appearance of the season alongside Tanner Boyd. Joloff has been named to start at lock with Isaac Liu shifting to the bench. Campbell and Fafida remained sideline. Smithy, what do you reckon, mate? Well, um, this might be shock news to everyone, but I'm going Titans here. Going Titans? Yeah, I just think round one, extremely disappointing. I think, and I think Desi would have, he wouldn't have held back at all in Ooh. that review, in that review meeting. He would have given him a little famous Desi spray, I reckon. And then last week, they had the week off to fix a few of the issues. Kieran Four and him, you know, being back, I think just steadies their ship a little bit. Um, a lot of experience there coming into the halves um, just to just to help out Tanner Boyd steer this this Titan side around. The one thing with the doggies is just uh, like they, they they scored they scored one try. Well, they scored one try last week, um, which you know they're they're a side that on the up. There's they're some new faces, some young guys, and they're still learning. But they only scored the eight points as well against Parramatta. Mm. Um, so it was two tries round one. One try round two. So it's just an issue for them at the moment where they're trying to find that try line. So looking at the looking at the two teams, just on paper, um, you know, I'm tipping Titans to be slightly too strong for the Doggies. And just quickly before we continue, uh, no, not one mention of Hargrave's 300th. Are you serious? You are correct, Paul. We forgot what an incredible achievement Massive. by Hargreaves in the front Massive. row. I mean... Well, yeah, play, like play, mate, playing three hundred. No matter where, no matter what position you're playing, it's it's a huge milestone, huge milestone. But for this guy, you know, to playing in the front row, it, it's it's the most physical position in the competition. You're running into brick walls. You're standing into blokes charging back off kickoffs, off dropouts, and all that sort of stuff. And for him to reach three hundred is massive. So, Jared, well done, mate, from the captain's run from Kempi and I and everyone at Sen. Congratulations. Have a big match. I know you will. Stay on the field, buddy. I know you get fired up for these ones against the Bunnies. I know you love this one. But, mate, <laughs> stay on the field in your 300th. Um, hope it's a memorable night for you and your family, and uh, go well. Yeah, uh, I mean, and also, we're, talk- we're not talking about a stat pad of front rower. We're talking about a no. down and dirty front rower doing the tough stuff. Oh, he loves it. Oh, wow. So, yeah, incredible achievement. Now, back to the Bulldogs v. the Titans. Now, I was very let down by Titans round one only because, well, two reasons. Obviously, mm. they didn't play as well as they did, but also I had such high hopes for them. I, I just like, I just yep. felt with this young forward pack, Desi has like all that kind of stuff. But yep. So I was going, I was heading into the next game, going, oh, I don't think they're anywhere close to where they should be. But seeing the shift of the the Dragons of going from where they were to the second game and where they were. It's like, mm. you know what? A week's a long... Well, two weeks is a long time in footy. I'm willing yes. to take a step back and go, you know what? I've still got faith in the Titans. They mm. still can you know, definitely turn it around, obviously. But I just think two weeks is a long time in footy. If, if they come out this week and they play similar to the way they did round one, that'll be really concerning for me because I'll be like, this is a young forward pack that should be responding to Desi. Like, it should be responding to Desi. Surely mm. that we're going to see a very amped up Titans this game. Oh, I'd like to think so. Oh. You'd be concerned if you don't. Yeah, particularly with their first up uh, showing against the Dragons. Um, they they are outsiders, Kempi. Wow. So the yeah the punters have got uh, got the doggies as favourites, slight favourites, I should say. Dollar eighty to two oh five the Titans. So it's a close match, but. Um, yeah, I, I just see value in in Foran coming back. Mm. I just think that he's he's the he's the steady hand that the Titans need. Um, mm. They got a lot of youth. Uh, you know, you just mentioned that they got a young forward pack. They got some younger guys out in the outside backs too, which you know have enthusiasm, um, which they need to the younger guys. But Kieran, with all of his experience, just has he just knows when to pull the strings, knows when to pull the trigger on certain plays, knows when to settle everyone down and just say, hey, boys, let's make our tackles, get through our sets. Um, I think he may be the difference in this one. And with the Bulldogs, what – yeah, you're, you, you mentioned it in regards mm-hmm. to the fact they're struggling to score points. And I, you know, on my podcast on Monday, I said that, you know, the concern for them was is that when you can't score points, you can't put scoreboard pressure on teams. And so yeah. you look at the Sharkies' game plan – 
they were so patient. They just they just believed that if they yep. just kept doing certain things, eventually the cracks would open. Whereas if you're a team that can put points on, you put pressure on that patience and you say, are you sure you want to be that patience? You're now you're six yeah. behind, you're 12 behind. Yeah. And, and so how do you think that the Bulldogs address that? Well, they just, well, man, they got to back themselves, really, mm-hmm. don't they? Like, you, you, you can't think, well, I, I put it this way. If you, if you think scoring one try or two tries is going to get you a win, then you better have the best defense in the comp. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, a different story if, different story if, you, if you're talking Penrith, right? And they're, because they have won games off scoring two tries, three tries max, and still defending their try line mm. and keeping the opposition you know, under those two or three tries that they've scored. So, But the, the doggies, they're not there yet. Mm. Okay, They're not the best defensive team in the competition, hence why they're not sitting at the top of the ladder. So that's my point. If you either got to defend, you either got to be the best defensive side in the comp when you're only scoring one or two tries a game, or you need to address your attack and say, hey, boys, where are we going to find our points? Yeah. Because you have to score them to win. Yeah. No secret there, mate. You know what I mean? So, mm. and and particularly in the modern game, like if if you can't score more than a try, then you're probably not going to be in the match. Yeah. <laughs> With your six agains, the speed of the game, the yeah. way things open yep. up, momentum. Yep. Dragons v the Cowboys, Saturday, 5.30 New South Wales time, 4.30 Queensland time, Jubilee Stadium. Debella moves to prop for the suspended Francis Molo. Laid Lua promoted to the starting side. Marshke makes his NRL debut at hooker in place of little concussion. Back row up. Lukey set to miss six weeks. Poor fella. Cannot catch a break. Mm-hmm. And uh, Finny Fuiaki Fui- joins the starting side. Jack Jazeski is uh, the yep. new face on the bench. Smitty. I mean, let's talk about Dragons initially. Mm. Wow. If you ever wanted to know if rugby league's a roller coaster, oh, oh man. What are your thoughts, mate? Um, yeah, oh, incredible. They just they they looked like a completely different footy side, didn't they? Yeah. From when they played Titans to uh, Dolphins, and I tipped, I tipped the Dragons round two, but uh, he he sucked us he suckered us in. Yeah. Wayne, he got us a beauty. I know we're getting off the game that we're talking about here, but so we'll get to Dolphins later. But great turnaround for the Dolphins against the Dragons. They just they they never looked in the match though. Dragons. Mm. Never looked like likely to score a point, and they didn't look like they were ever going to win the match. It just it went from bad to worse for them on the weekend. And I tell you what, they're going to have to aim up real quick um, because they've got one of the hottest teams in the comp right now. I think the Cowboys have scored the most points. Just talking about scoring points um, regarding with the Bulldogs, the Cowboys have scored more points than any other team in the comp. They've scored 64 points in the first two rounds. Wow. So they are a lethal footy side. Mm. As in, you invite them down to your end, more more than likely they're going to walk away with points. Yeah. Unless you're prepared to aim up on your try line. Unless you're prepared to aim up on your try line. Now, now the Dragons did that in round one, but they didn't in round two. Mm. They didn't. They it, it was like they just, I don't know. I don't know what it was. They just, they, they were, the, as I said before, they were completely different footy side to what they showed us against the Titans. Whether they were prepared to roll the sleeves up, aim up against um, Dolphins, where the Dolphins just too good for them with their structures and their attack. And I know, you know, the Hammer had a massive game, but, you know, like how did that change so quickly in, in a week's time? Um, the Cowboys, you know, very good. I know they snuck away with a victory, but they are showing signs of going back to that form that they showed us, what, a couple of years ago, Kenby, 2022, yeah. where they got all the way to a prelim final. Um, nearly got to the big one, so I'm I'm going Cowboys this one. Yeah, I'm going Cowboys as well. Uh, they look they were a little bit scrappy first half, uh, but the fact that they were you know can just pile points on you. To be honest, it's a little bit like Broncos last year where you'd you'd, you'd get half a game going. Oh, what's going on here? And then they just just absolutely yeah. smash you with points. Uh, yeah. In regards to the Dragons, I mean. I'm at a loss for words. I really am. I I cannot believe the turnaround of essentially playing top eight footy round one where you go, Mm -hmm. this Dragon side genuinely could contest for round one to one of their worst performances in in years. Like it genuinely, I'm shocked at the turnaround. I just can't for the life of me 
understand what it could be because it can't be complacency. I mean, you have one. Not good, in round two. No, there's no way. Is it? <laughs> is it training? Is it? You know, were they fatigued? Is it? Mate, for the life of me, I can't explain it. Yeah. Uh, if you're the Dragons, I guess I, I, the most I feel sorry for is Dragons fans because you saw the celebration of their round one performance and they haven't had much to cheer for for a while now and they were so happy. And and then, look, if they go up to the Dolphins and they lose 24-12, that's all good. They, they go up there, it's, it's yep. an away game. The Dolphins, they want to bounce back themselves. But it's just the way they lost it, I think, that has shocked a lot of mm. Dragons fans back into, oh, okay. Because the problem now for the Dragons is is that performance, the set round two, has completely erased round one. Yeah. So you can't even look to that and go, mate, look how good we were round one. We've got – it's it's gone. Yep. I'll tell you where they went wrong, mate. 13 errors. Oh. 13 errors is where they went wrong compared to the Dolphins' five. So that that's just – like you cannot compete. Mm. You just cannot compete with anyone in the comp. If you want to double, well, they've almost tripled the opposition's error rate. You know yeah. what I mean? When you're turning over that much football and you're making more tackles than the opposition, at some stage you're going to get caught out. Mm. And, you know, so what was it, 38 blot? 38 blot. Wow. You Far know, out. So, bit of work to do for the drags. I think maybe Cowboys too strong, though. Yeah, agreed. Now, Tigers take on the Sharkies Saturday, 7.35, 6.35 Queensland time at Leichhardt Oval. Team news. Olam is good to go after recovering from a knee injury. He joins last week's debutante, Fatape in the centres with Stafford Toa, set to miss eight weeks uh, after undergoing ankle injury. Caesar promoted to the starting side in seven with Sullivan shifted to 14. Bolle is named at centre with Safarth moving to the interchange. Shark team news, Nicola, uh, Nicola suspension sees Jack Williams moving to the starting side. Hunt returns after missing last week's game due to a virus, joins the bench. Billy Burns comes in the interchange for uh, Hal Tapua and is set to make his club debut. How do you see this one, Smitty? I think Sharkies. Yeah, Sharkies. They're playing a pretty good style of footy at the moment. Very direct. And they look really certain of what they're doing, particularly with the footy. Um, this was after, what was it? Was this our first show? I said they might. <laughs> I said they'll, they'll slide out of the eight. Yeah. They must have been listening. Oh, absolutely. Fitzy. Fitzy's I'm... given them the audio and said, here, boys, fire up. Absolutely. Smithy's, Smithy's ripped us. <laughs> um, no, like, well, I think um, well done to the to the Sharkies. They've uh, they've played really well first couple of rounds, and they've got to take some positive um, feelings into this match as well against the Tigers. Justin Olam, big juzzy. Um, back into the, the, the centres. Aiden Caesar as well, been uh, moved up to number seven. Does that change the way they play? Um, experienced player, of course. Um, that, we, we've seen the Tigers against the Raiders. They made some fundamental errors, right, mm. on the weekend. They were in some pretty good attacking positions on the weekend and just they were Raiders too much. But um, maybe those more experienced players, they add a bit of um, depth and um, bring a bit of experience to those younger guys around them. I just think on a whole, though, um, taking on the Sharks at the moment, with the form they're in, even though um, Nicara is suspended, one of the best back rows in the comp at the moment, um, Britain, uh, Nicara. But, uh, yeah, Sharky's too strong for mine. The, the really uh, exciting thing for Sharky's fans is their game plan is relatively simple. And yeah. so when you, you're getting victories with a relatively simple game plan, the good thing is later on in the year, if you, if you go through a bit of a form slump, you're always going to have that blueprint there to fall back on and go, okay, boys, let's let's just let's simplify things, go back to what worked for us. Whereas, you know, some of the, some other teams where they might get scrappy wins where a game plan isn't really executed, sometimes when you're looking for answers, it's very hard to find that obvious answer. Um, I will say as well, the Sharkies, they, they looked to a degree in the first year under Fitzgibbon, they looked like a Craig Fitz, Fitzgibbon side. Last year, a lot of the time I was like, this doesn't look like a Craig Fitzgibbon side. This year is the most, I believe, they look like a genuine... If there is a an expression of Fitzgibbon as a player, it's the way the Sharkies are playing at the moment. Mm. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm a big fan, mate. I like them. I like the way that they've approached this year. I think they would have been disappointed with the way they exited the comp the last two. And they're putting into practice what they've, what they've trained for all preseason. Like you said, simple, straightforward footy, particularly in these early rounds, banking wins... 
Perfect way to approach it. And just quickly before we head to the break, the Tigers, uh, it's just that first 20 they've got to sort out. Yeah. You know, that yeah. first 20 minutes they got blown off the park. And I'm willing to give them a pass by the fact that that was their round one game, whereas the Raiders yes. had already played. Yep. And so I think that I'm going to be able to judge them a bit more by the fact that, okay, they got shocked, then they fought yep. their way back into the match. Let's yep. see how they go first 20 against the Sharkies, who have been outstanding. Uh, were outstanding last week in the first 20. Eels versus Seagulls. Uh, I mean, outside of Rabbitohs, Roosters, uh, oh, well, and Panthers, Broncos, but if you players out, there's an argument to be made this could be a match of the round. You know, when you look at the bookies, it's tight as anything. Mm. Mm-hmm. Eels, although unlucky, you're not unlucky, but they lost last week. Were really good round one. Sea Eagles, they have been absolutely flying. Morgan Harper moves to the wing to cover for Bailey Simonson with Blaze Talangi. Uh, Talangi, hopefully I'm saying that right, coming to the centres for his NRL debut. Uh, Kelma Talangi has been named on the bench despite suffering a shoulder injury against the Panthers. Regan Campbell Gillard set for his 200th game. Tommy Talao is listed among the reserves after suffering an ankle injury against the Roosters with. Uh, Vega, name to start. How do you see this one playing out, Smithy? Uh, great game. Great game to kick off uh, Sunday Arbo football. A couple of good matches, actually, Sunday Arbo, which is uh, great to see. Eels, as you mentioned, mate, they've uh, they've had a pretty good start to the season. Um, took it to Penrith um, last week, but fell short. Uh, I think they're, they're well and truly in this, mate. Well and truly in this. Well done. Quick congratulations to Big Reggie. Uh, Regan Campbell-Gillard for reaching 200, much like Jared Warrior Hargreaves. Uh, played played up front all of his career, played test footy, played Origins. 200 games in the middle. Big effort by the big man, so I hope it all goes well for you. But Manly, wow, they've, they've, good. They've, they've, they, they are looking good. Many saying many saying that they are the form team of the comp, Kempi. Yeah. Had a big win um, over in, in Vegas, of course. Had the week off, come back, and then... Got it done in round two as well. They'll, I'll tell you what, they'll, they'll be feeling extremely confident to take on Parramatta. I just feel Parramatta at home uh, be too, a little bit too strong for Manly. Yeah, a I've, too, too, too strong for them. Yeah, I've tipped Eels at home, but I'll tell you what, it was not an easy decision. I just, I this is flip a coin type of stuff. What I love mm-hmm. the most about Seagulls' win last week you know, we know DCE, incredible. We know Tom Travojevic, incredible. But what I loved about it was their forward pack dominated the Roosters' forward pack. Because yeah. the only questions I – well, the, sorry, I had three questions heading into uh, the season for the Manly. Mm-hmm. I basically had, can Tommy stay fit? He looks good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can Luke Brooks bounce back? He looks good. But mm-hmm. the main question was, can that forward pack go with the top-tier forward packs? Because outside of Olakowatu and Jake Trevojevic, you could argue they're a little they're a tier below. Now, mm-hmm. after their performance against the Roosters, they look like they can match it with the best of them. Yeah. Just quietly, is Olakowatu the best back row in the comp at the moment? A hundred percent. Like I think so. He, I mean, him and Hosking, you could you could argue Hosking, but I, I, at the moment, Olakowatu is is what I'd go just with past uh, form. Yeah. So I'm not like I don't see the write-ups in the papers down in Sydney because they, they talk origin teams every week, don't they? New South Wales, they pick a team every week. Is well, that I, right? Like I'm, a running... I'm guilty. I'm guilty of it. Oh, you, uh, you, you know, name one, do you? You know what? I, I do it, Smithy. I do it to perpetuate the the struggle of picking the right team. So I'm actually a sleeper inside New South right. Wales trying to just you know muddy the waters a little bit. Gotcha. Yeah. But, but this man is surely... Oh. Surely he's got a blue jersey on his back at the moment. Mate. I mean, if you're going to pick the Blues jersey this week, you'd be picking yep. him starting on the edge with probably Martin on the other edge and then maybe Murray in the, the at 13 with Yo, even yep. though Yo's been incredible, but Murray at 13 in origin has also been outstanding. Yeah. Um, like, like his numbers though, like last oh. week, like his number, like 17 runs, one for 162 metres, six tackle breaks. <laughs> and on top of that, he's made 22 tackles in a winning side. Mate, you know what I mean? Seriously. Like, Unbelievable. Oh, I, and and I, I, we always say, you know, you select players other teams don't want to play against. Mm. Ola Kawatu oh, is the guy yeah. you don't Yucky. want to play against. <laughs> uh, okay, Knights v Storm. Coggart, new halfback. We've been through that. Braley, obviously, back. Uh, Tuala from quad, in, quad injury on the wing to fill the void left by Marja, who is also out. Uh, set to undergo surgery four to six weeks out. Hugh suspended. What a joke that is. Tyron Wishart oh. moves to the bench to halfback. 
Radley joins the interchange. Munster still sidelined. Welsh is sidelined also after suffering a HIA. Uh, uh, Mayorda joins the bench. How do you see this one playing out, Smithy? Um, this is going to be a really tough one. Mm. Tough game for Storm, considering Jerome Hughes is out. As you said, what a G up. I can't believe he was suspended. Oh my God. Given some of the things we've seen across the weekend, which made it across the match review committee's desk and they only ended up being a fine. And Jerome Hughes gets a week for just really defending his try line and the referee getting in the way. Anyway, that's done and dusted. He's not playing, so we need to worry about who is playing. And that is Tyron Wishart. He's coming into the halves. He's going to partner Jonah Pezzett. Big game for those two boys. Mm. Huge game. Now, you'd imagine Harry Grant um, in that spine and Ryan Pappenhausen also, the one and nine, stepping up and taking a bit more um, of having a bit more influence on how this team's run. Um, really important. It just doesn't detract from the great things that they're doing currently in the first couple of weeks. As in, it's they don't want to try and overplay their hand, but if they can get in there and be a little bit more vocal and help out Pezzett and Tyron Wishart, who, you know, they're great players in their own right. Two young men, you know, Tyron Wishart, he's a, he's a great utility to have. Fills a, fills a lot of voids in multiple positions, and Jonah Pezzett has started the season extremely well in place of Cam Munster, but they are inexperienced. And it can be a little bit daunting at time thinking, well, us two young fellas running this team. So I'd expect Pappenhausen and Grant to step up a little bit there. It's traditionally been a hard place to win games for the Storm, Kempi. Yeah. Newcastle. Newcastle just seemed to lift. And if there's any time that they're going to lift, it's going to be this week. Yeah. It's oh. going to be this week, mate, off off, off the um, result last week. You know, just fell short to the Cows. Lost round one against Canberra at home. It's a proud footy town and their team, uh, sorry, their fans, they're going to turn out in droves of this one. They'll expect a good showing against Melbourne.